we got one of one of my favorite people on the planet, part of our class. Um, the sack master, Mr. Bye Week, whatever you want to call him. He goes by quite a few names. Mr. Just, Red Bank. Yeah, Mr. Red Bank, the Jersey <laughs> Shore. Uh, but we got we got Garrett Sickles. A couple thoughts. I think Drew Lars' performance last week, I think people tend to forget Northwestern is a really well coached team. Always tough. Always a tough, really well coached team, especially on that defensive side of the ball. Getting in a rhythm for those key positions at wide receiver, you know, the last six years we've had dudes, right? You had guys that took every snap. If they took one snap, it was for a quick swig of water, you know, and I just think it's still a young position room. Um, So, you know, they're going to have to step up and those leaders are going to emerge throughout the season. I'm not going to sit here and tell you to do what you do your own thing. But from my experience, coaches coach and the players make plays. So make the play within the scheme. But sometimes you got to be a football player. You got to be a football player, man. There you go. Yo, guys, we got the merch. We have hats, shirts, hoodies. We got it all. Make sure you hit the link in the description. Check it out. You guys keep buying the merch. It allows us to produce this pod and continuing to bring you guys dope content. So go check it out. Make sure you tag us at State Media PSU. And when you get yours, make sure you shout us out. We'll give you a shout out online. Check it out. I'm looking forward to the support, and we appreciate you guys as always. Penn State fans, um... We're back in the pocket. We got uh, a special guest. that We're going to try to join him for the entire show tonight. We're, we'll see how that goes um, and see if he's interesting enough. But um, before we get to that, uh, we got we got an announcement about our October 5th date. Um, the uh, ops team at State Media PSU has been slipping a little bit. So we actually had to do some shuffling around some of the players availability wasn't that great during during the bye week they have they do have some commitments in practice so we are actually hosting our event live at Champs Downtown on October 16th for the Ohio State week so um, sorry about the update sorry about the confusion i'm sure that we're going to be pumping more stuff out there but i wanted to kind of start the pot off with that um, and looking forward to seeing you guys up there. And uh, I guess now that we've gotten all the semantics out of the way, um, we got we got one of one of my favorite people on the planet, part of our class, um, the sack master, Mister Bye Week, whatever you want to call him. He goes by quite a few names. Mister Red Bank. <laughs> yeah, Mister Red Bank, the Jersey Shore. <laughs> Uh, but we got we got Garrett Sickles um, played in the league for a little bit. I, I know you guys know him. For, you know, four years at Penn State, you did go, you did do four years, but you redshirted a year, left a year early. So, um, but we got Garrett Sickles in the house, man. What's up, Bubba? How you doing? <laughs> doing great, man. Great to see you guys. Fired up to be on during the bye week. Yeah, the bye week special, dude. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what uh what, what's been up with you dude you were out in san diego for a little bit right uh, after you got done playing and and now now give us give us your life update life update uh Maz and i got married two years ago and probably two months after we got married brad bars hit me up and uh bars said hey man we're doing a great thing in nashville uh got our contractor's license. We're doing real estate development. We need somebody to run that construction side and basically said, when are you moving? <laughs> so I was at work. I, you know, called Maddie. I'm like, Hey, we have to talk about something when you get home. And she was instantly, <laughs> you know, thinking, what'd you do? And I was like, well, I think we need to move. So long story short, been here about a year and a half in Nashville. It's great. You know, working with Mike Hole, Brad Bars, Tom Pancos, Mike Farrell. Got a great thing going down here. So it's been good. Nice. You guys got half the damn Letterman Association. (laughs) We're trying. We're trying. We call it Penn State South. You know, I'm trying, trying to get more people. So. Hey, that's the network, man. That's the network and uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, alumni association they preach about and all that. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's good. It's really good. Nice. 
That's good stuff, dude. Um, you've been watching any ball? Oh yeah, Maddie's watching ball now too. Now there that, you go. You know, T- Taylor Swift uh, has wow. entered the chat with the NFL. <laughs> I think it's the first time ever. My wife was like, "Hey, uh, we gotta get home. You know, we're gonna do some stuff for Sunday night football." I was like, "I, I didn't even know who was playing." She's like, "Well, Travis Kelsey and oh uh, yeah." So <laughs> had to give yeah. it some time there. Damn it, sickles! I, we were—I was trying to be the one pod that didn't bring up Taylor Swift. Yeah, I'm watching a lot. I mean, it's fun. Uh, you know, just with working with all the guys every Saturday, we either go to someone's house or go to the you know local Penn State bar and watch games together. So it's been good. Nice. What's your take on it? I know I, we got kind of like a crammed year. I'm not. Let's let's not focus on Penn State because we're going to spend about 45 minutes talking about them. What's your take on college football this year? I think it's been a hell of a year. There's a lot of really good teams. B and I were just talking about it before we hopped on. Like yeah. looking through looking through it, there's it, it. It's not like last year where like the Big Twelve was dead, the right. ACC was dead. So Big it was big, you know, dead. Yeah, it was. It was just you know. You had you had a couple teams competing for it, and I think that's why ultimately you saw two Big Ten teams get into the get into the dance last year. But um, I feel like this year it's a much more open race. You've seen some programs that have been in the ash, been in the dumpster, mm-hmm. kind of rise from the ashes a little bit. Um, you know what's what's been some surprises for you? I think this year, as we all know, there's been a lot of great storylines. Um, but I will say this year compared to the you know last 10, it's probably the most competitive across all conferences. Like you look at all the best teams in the power five and there's not one from that conference that's standing out. Whereas, you know, last year, everyone was looking at Georgia. Everyone was looking at, you know, Alabama two years ago. This year, you know, you're kind of looking at Texas on the side. You're looking at three teams in the Pac-12 right now. And then the Big Ten East, you know, it's you know, it's going to come down to those three schools. Then, you know, it's anyone's game, really. I mean, the margin of error now is so much smaller. Like, you have to win week in, week out. Like, truly, you have to go 1-0 every week, and you got to, you know, see where the chips fall at the end. Yeah. Shoot. But – it still all depends who controls the line of scrimmage. I got to say that. <laughs> who gets knocked back and who gets knocked back, like that's that's what it comes yeah. down to. Simple as that. Simple yeah. as that. <laughs> Damn. Well, speaking on that, dude, I think um, I think this Penn State team's done a really good job, and we've talked about it. And there's some, there's some questions that we're going to get to in the mailbag uh, from some fans talking about the, the O-line and the development and, why would we be getting explosives, yada, yada. We'll get to those. But I think Penn State's really done a damn good job of revamping the offensive line. And then defensively, um, B and I have kind of not clashing views, but um, <laughs> just kind of the way we built that D line with some smaller, twitchier type bodies um, as opposed to the, the Jordan Davises and the big dominating defensive lines that um, – that can really command space and command hats. And they're more of penetrate gash and like play fast, try to create explosives type, type of D line. So when you're looking at this Penn state team, what they've done up into this point, um, I'll focus on the defensive side of the ball. What have you seen from the defensive line? I think each week they've gotten better and better. I think those first couple games, you saw four guys kind of doing their own thing, you know, when it comes to rushing the quarterback, Whereas from day one, walking in the door at Penn State, you know, out of high school, you learn how to rush as a unit. Yeah. You know, like you could have your outside guys doing their things, but if those inside guys aren't holding down the gaps and throwing lanes, it, it's just going to leave a, you know, a, a lane like an Aaron Rodgers, right? Who always finds that B-gap window, escapes upfield, extends mm-hmm. plays. I think something that they were lacking early on was that, that rush lane integrity. But last week was the first time, and they've done it a couple times, but it was the most consistent I've seen last week where they truly rushed as a unit and they're able to get home with four guys. They didn't have to rely on, you know, pressures and whatnot. Um, I think, you know, when you look at teams, it's all about not so much who starts the year the fastest, 
It's who peaks and trends each week and who kind of hits their stride at the right time. So I think we're seeing a steady crescendo going. And I'm uh, a big word. It is a big <laughs> word. Um, so I'm excited to see what that front seven does, you know, coming down the stretch. Um, you know, we got, we can't look too far ahead. You know, we got a game, then we got to play the shoe. So, you know, we just got to keep going upward. We're allowed to look ahead, Garrett. Yeah, we can. <laughs> We're allowed to look ahead now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, well, you're speaking on the D-line and right back. You said the front seven. I say the same thing about the linebackers. I'm seeing steadily and steadily, steadily, steadily improvement throughout the, uh, throughout the year so far. And we talk about every week they're playing so fast, which is the kind of, you know, you talk about rush lane integrity, and obviously that's how you get gashed. But as we know, they tell you play full speed and – you know, you'll fix the mistakes. And that's what I've been seeing so far. Get to the ball. For sure. No, I agree with that, especially at that second level position. You know, that, that opening game, you had guys. I mean, I think I talked to, I called you about it like the next day. Yeah. After, and I was like, those dudes are fast. Like, yeah. it's the fastest sideline to sideline I've seen us. But they're almost like, it's like just trust your fundamentals. Like, yeah, you could be the first one there. But if you're going to be the first one there, you know, lay in, wrap up, secure it call it good but yeah. i definitely think they're finding their rhythm and everyone i think last week to be built i think you can attest this is very much like 2016 where you're playing at northwestern it's like when we just beat ohio state we're playing at Purdue. Mm. Mm. 11 a.m kick you're coming off a big one and it's like you gotta make your own juice and you know yeah. that first half it's close, but that second half everyone just realizes, okay, we don't have to do anything crazy. Everyone right. just has to do their job and be one eleventh of the defense. And I think that's what we saw in that second half. Well, it's it's funny you say that, right? Let's 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 shift gears. Let's go. Let's dive into this Northwestern game, right? Like I I, I jinxed it. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the <laughs> I'm gonna take the ownership of that. Like I, I was talking about it last week and saying that this Penn State team. When I evaluate teams, I, I try to evaluate them as, you know, the floor is kind of what I look at more so than the ceiling. Because mm -hmm. if your floor is still good enough to go out, and ultimately we did in the second half, to your point, like right. pull away. And as I said in the uh, the mailbag video, you know, good teams win, great teams cover. We ended up doing that. But um, it was it was it was hard to watch that first half and even the beginning of that third quarter. Uh, just just from what we've been seeing. And it's funny, you're talking about that defensive line, and I felt the one thing that kind of hurt us was their quarterback getting out and making plays. And sometimes, at least in my opinion, that comes from guys getting too far upfield and playing too fast. And it's funny that you said that you thought this week was the best they've played as a unit, um, which they may have, but it's still, it's still tough to feel out when – to really take that shot and try to get the guy and then does that open up an, a lane or, or two and expose mm -hmm. somebody else and somebody else has to cover for you. I just felt like that was the one thing that hurt him. Fortunately, not bad enough. Um, but I felt like that was the one thing defensively that did give them problems when they did kind of get the ball going on the Northwestern side. It was, it was a quarterback using his legs on those third mm -hmm. and eight or something stupid like that, where they had their ears pinned back and they were almost too damn fast. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, you yeah. definitely get in some trouble like that. And I think that's definitely something to look look towards the rest as the season goes, no matter who we play. You know, a lot of these quarterbacks are very can uh, can move, you know, can do a little bit. Some are more dangerous than others. So it'll be interesting to see when those teams roll in with Manny Diaz uh kind of schemes up for those those type of plays because that is that's how we've been getting burnt on uh like you said, those third downs, third and sevens when we're bringing I, the heat. I, I also think it's just tough. And I'm not knocking anything, but there's not that six foot three, three hundred pound guy or six five, three hundred pound guy taking up two guys the whole yeah. time. Yeah. Taking yeah. We talked about that. Like you don't have you don't have like the Austin Johnsons. Like like even our last year, you know, Parker six yeah. three three hundred. You know, the dude could rush. <laughs> <laughs> that, that dude can rush, but, you know, he'd take Parker two guys or, or do you double him or do you d double six five three hundred 300 pound, you know, built like Adonis Curtis Coffrey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. You know, so you had some guys all of ability and just having that presence there, 
you know, it, I, th- I think they were more consistent last week rushing as a unit, but again, to your point, um, you know, the times they did get home is the best examples of that, but the times the plays extended were the th- areas they definitely need to improve on. Yeah. yeah. And then it's funny you bring that point up as an edge guy, Garrett, like having two guys on the interior who were going to get two or three yards deep and just kind of clog stuff up where the quarterback's lanes then, to your point, from an escape standpoint, are either up and out or back out the back door, which oh, yeah. when you have a team – like we like when you have a defense like our defense is built with how fast they are. Like you're trying to escape out the back door. I mean that's it's a death sentence in most cases. Um, but from an edge rusher standpoint, with the guys we got now, chop. You know you start going down the line of the, of the weapons we have, guys who can rush the passer on the edge. Uh, it would almost be advantageous to try to manufacture that in some way, shape, or form, and either coach those guys to slow down a little bit in some some of those third down passing situations or, or, um, cause you're really not, you're really not changing bodies. You know what I mean? Well, and I think they, they have done what I've noticed. They've schemed up kind of the delayed linebacker. I don't even call it a blitz, but when they've schemed up the, the game where mm-hmm. the end crashes and they have a backer sitting waiting for him to flush out and you see Abdul Carter or one of these guys kind of hit the accelerator and now he's flushed. It hasn't really hit home for a sack yet, I don't think, but I've seen it. It's kind of a spy-looking delayed rush. I don't know what it is, Green Dog, but – probably just add, once they see that – once yeah. they see running back get lost in the wash, like just go, and they're probably banking on the quarterback not being able to get to that in time. Yeah, and with the you speed. I mean? I just, mean, you take sick? I'm not trying to add a little salt on there, but – I just like rushing four to let the big dogs up front do their job and not give a, <laughs> not give a sack to, you know, the linebacker. Up. I, I think the main thing, just going back to it, it's like, you know, I think Chop showed a lot of different rushes last week. And the times the quarterbacks stay in the pocket where we're in the end, we're rushing a little bit heavier. They're coming with some inside long arm. They're showing different looks. You know what I mean? I also mm-hmm. think, and I was talking to Mike Farrell about this during the game because, you know, Chop's an amazing talent, and we were just talking about the end position. I'm like, our scheme's going really well. I really like Manny Diaz as a DC, but it's hard if you're a true 4 3 end rusher to get going. When you're yeah. always stunting and you can't just start pitching at the tackle, because everyone thinks, you know, sacks just happen, and they do. Like, those are the best ones, because then if it's one move or that first third down, you beat a guy with speed. Then you're like, all right, I'm in that tackle's head. He's going to yeah, over. Got I'm going to come underneath, you know. So, a lot of you know defensive end. It's all about pitching and setting up that tackle. And I think that's tough because when you bring pressure, you have an assignment that you have to do. And you can't get right. that tackle to kind of you know bite or you know misstep on things. Yeah, that's that's a big deal. I mean, I briefly spoke on this last week, not to the detail you're talking about with edge rushing, but just being on the field and rotating, kind of getting in that flow of the game and feeling it out. Mm-hmm. And as you're saying, against tackle one-on-one, that yeah. is a big deal because, you know, I mean, you made the big play in the big game against those tackles to where it, it pays dividends throughout the game, kind of, you know, throwing mm-hmm. different tools and moves at them. And, mm-hmm. and we'll see how that shakes out. But we know Chop is going to be on the field, and hopefully he gets yeah. that free range to kind of just work his uh, artillery. Like letting Zettel do his thing and let Mike Hole make him right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I talked I talked to a few linebackers in the summer when I was up there. It's like, I'm not going to sit here and tell you to do, what you, do your own thing. But from my experience, coach is coach. And the players make plays, so make the play within the scheme. But sometimes you gotta be a football you gotta, player. You gotta be a football player, man. There you go. Zetto was a great uh, example of that. <laughs> Even in the NFL, I remember my rookie year. You know, I'm playing Sam linebacker, and they're teaching me coverages and everything. Yeah. Wade Phillips goes, "Well, okay, if you don't know what you're doing. Just rush." He goes, just be a football player. And I was like, yeah. all right. He's like, no, don't rush all the time, but just, right, just right, right. be a football player. Yeah. That's good stuff, man. Let's uh, let's let's shift over to the offensive side of the ball. Um, <laughs> you know, what you obviously, like, what you didn't like what did you not like? <laughs> yeah, obviously not uh, our best showing. Um, we did win the battle of attrition, though, which again, 
bodes well to what I was saying. This team, uh, years past, that's a that's a game that I think ends up being like 28-13, 21-13, 24-13, something stupid like that. You know, we keep it. They, they find a way. We don't really get in rhythm, and they ended up f- figuring it out and getting in rhythm and, you know, putting together some drives. But the one thing, the one thing I've noticed, and I think this is going to kind of answer some of those questions, is I, I really truly think that Mike Yersich wants to be a ball control offense. Um, and it goes back to kind of the basics of, like, football, which – sometimes get lost in the sauce, right? You know, right. you can turn around and handle the ball for three yards in a cloud of dust every time, you know, you're going to, you're going to win a lot of, a lot of football games. You're going to, if you win the time of possession, you win the turnover battle, you're going to win a lot of football games. And that's something that we've done consistently mm-hmm. for uh, even going back into the back latter half of last year of just winning the time of possession, controlling the football, moving the ball down the field methodically presenting different looks in the run game, winning the line of scrimmage consistently, and then being able to benefit from that um, ca- in a more calculated manner down the game from or later in the game from a passing perspective. Um, and then I think Yersich did do some stuff the previous year or so that was a little unorthodox, some of those unbalanced sets and things like that. And when you have a guy like Cliff out there controlling it, you know, a tenured guy's played a lot of ball, I think you feel a little more comfortable doing some stuff like that um, than maybe he does right now with Drew. But the biggest thing with Drew is is, um, I feel like he's done a really, really good job of of the game plan type plays, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Like Mm -hmm. like the stuff that you, you know, you, you, you paint a picture and you end up getting that picture and, you know, he can he can do what he needs to do. But. I think where he's struggled is trusting that timing and trusting that anticipation with throws um, in kind of your base stuff, right? And that just comes, I think, from from defensive recognition and getting reps under your belt of seeing seeing things play out differently and be like, ah, you know, I could sit on this. I really want to. I, I want the fifteen yard gain, but nah, here I'll just I'll just take the out for three and put us in a good position and keep it moving and doing that quickly. He just seems like he gets to it. He does it sometimes but not consistently enough to where it's like he's playing fast and it's second nature and he's getting in the rhythm of the game and, and, and Mike's thought process in terms of setting things up. So I just think that whether it's the 11 o'clock kick, whether it's just him really still developing, right. I feel like people want to rush him and, and rush the process. I think it's, a, I think it's a little bit of all that, but at the end of the day uh, we need to just, chill as as a fan base because we're still beating teams by 26 and a half points this year. Um, and we're putting ourselves in good situations to continue to do that. And and ultimately, when it comes to these marquee matchups that we're talking about, Ohio State, the Michigan, kid's going to have to make plays. I said it last week. You know, he's mm-hmm. probably going to have to make five to ten plays in, in both of those games that are either going to win or lose the game. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. But one thing for both of you guys, just just so it kind of gets the ball out of my court here, uh, the receiving room has had me slightly baffled. And I don't know if it's a combination of Drew still feeling things out like I just elaborated on or if it's just we got kind of so many guys. It goes back to that thing you were talking about, B, where it's hard to get in a rhythm when you're rotating mm-hmm. so much. You know yeah. what I mean? But um, – even Keandre, even Keandre, like, I don't know if we've had a guy, like, just come out and be like, I'm that dude. Like, right. Alan was, like, Chris and Hammy were, like, right. I don't know if we've had a guy do that where you could feed him the ball 15 times and he's going to get open and win and, and do it right. consistently. So, what are your thoughts on that room and, you know, where we can maybe make some strides with that? Um, go ahead, Sigal. Take it. Couple thoughts. I think Drew Lawrence' performance last week. I think people tend to forget Northwestern is a really well coached team. Always tough. Always a tough, really well coached team, especially on that defensive side of the ball. Um, so we have to throw but that. So was Iowa, huh? But so was Iowa. Yeah, I, I know. I know. Uh, Iowa, you know, has some trouble at Beaver Stadium. But uh, I don't know. <laughs> but going back to it, I think getting in a rhythm 
for those key positions at wide receiver. You know, the last six years, we've had dudes, right? You had guys that took every snap. If they took AJ. one snap, it was for a quick swig of water. You know, yeah. and I just think it's still a young position room. Um, so, you know, they're going to have to step up, and those leaders are going to emerge throughout the season. Um, drops, drops are frustrating. They're, it's just short memory. You know, go to the next play. Oh, line-wise, this is the best the offensive line has looked in a while, I think, especially up front. Like, Yeah, I think it goes back to, like, the Daryl Clark, like Michael Robinson here. <laughs> Yeah, like no, that honestly. first snap when they came out against West Virginia, I was like, boys, we got no line. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they, yeah. they passed the, the eye tests and everything, and we were running the ball at the end of the game. You know, we were moving that line of scrimmage. Um, but I just think they're still young, and it goes back to each game, each play, each series, those guys are going to get those invaluable, you know, reps, even if it's just mental. You know, those guys are just going to keep building on top of that, and you're going to have one game – where, you know, somebody kind of takes ownership of being the guy in that room. So I'm excited to see who it is. Yeah, yeah I think it's, it's definitely possible. But to your, your point, Hack, it could be concerning. Uh, as we get into these, these games are coming that we're talking about. The real deal, you know, games are coming. And as you said, we talked about last week, Drew's going to have to make those five, six plays. But it's going to be those receivers making those five, six tough catches. Yeah, as we said, we we had Hammy and Rod God and AR. These guys, it's getting open, but it's also Ohio State's not going to let you get open. Michigan's not going to let you get open. It's going to be and you're going to have a pass rush in your face. In your face, yeah. ball catchers taking a hit. Dudes are grabbing you. Everyone holds. It doesn't get called. Mm-hmm. Um, especially those two teams. So it's going to be those. That's where you want to see guys kind of. You know, seeing that same improvement that we're talking about, the D-line and linebackers and DBs, kind of want to see that same improvement because you're only going to get the ball thrown to you every little – every time is an opportunity. I'd like to see him make the most of it. But yeah. as we keep talking about, we have the talent and depth to make it happen. So, I, I think the tight end room has been a, been a consistent theme, and I'd really like to see them get involved more in the, in the open field and Agreed. like your normal down passing game. I feel like they use them really, really well down in the red zone. Um, but I don't think you see them being featured enough, whether it be off of play action and letting them go in there and kind of yeah. like run a 12-yard bang around search route between the hashes off of the mm. soft, soft linebacker or safety or something like that. I just think being able to get those guys going too will only help facilitate for sure, one on ones on the outside. Yeah, those guys. So you're really putting those receivers in the best position possible to say, "Listen, man, it may be quarters, but those safeties' eyes are going to be inside working on oh, yeah. going vertical and and trying to slow that down. Like, you just got to beat this guy. Yeah, whether it's, whether yeah. it's a comeback, stop route, something like that. Like, you got to you just got to win your one on ones. Um, and I think just again, and then Drew, like I said, Drew's got to start playing with more timing and anticipation with those things. Like he makes those throws that are awesome. And he, like I said, he does a good job with the game plan throws and he even does a good job finding those check downs, but it's not as consistent. And then that intermediate passing game, he's shown flashes of it. I'm not saying that he doesn't do it, but I'm saying Mm -hmm. consistently with a guy at that, that talented, that's what people are going to look for, for his next step and his evolution and his Mm -hmm. development. So um, anyway, Northwestern, we got them, 1-0. Um, you know, did what we needed to do and uh, was, I think, ultimately pleased with how we pulled away. They had me uh, shaking in my boots there for uh, the better part of the well, the first half and the third quarter. But, um, you know, we got it done. So yep. Still breaking records. Still, still breaking <laughs> records. Um, with it. Yeah, we're slightly behind Ohio State for the most consecutive games scoring thirty plus points. I think we're going on thirteen games. They have four games short. I think if we if we do it for the next four games, we got Uh, it. Okay, it was the Ohio State thirteen fourteen run, which that was a crazy offense. (laughs) That was a crazy offense. So as as you said, we all got to chill out, but it's because we want and expect so much, and rightfully so, we deserve it. The players deserve to make it happen. That, you know, we get a little crazy sometimes when we're not blowing teams out by the first quarter. But if you look around college football, no one is 
all these teams are coming out tough. No one's really just handing it off and running for 300 yards a game. Uh, yeah. If you really pay attention, Alabama, Georgia's not controlling a line of scrimmage as they usually do. Mm-hmm. So everyone's stay yeah. cool. These guys are figuring it out, and I'm just excited to watch and look. It's a crescendo. To- it's a crescendo. Yeah. As our as our using <laughs> the of our great guest here. Um, Heading into the bye week, though. Yeah. Speaking of that, Mister Bye Week himself, the bye week. Um, bye week bandit. <laughs> before we get before we dive into into Penn State and what they need to be focusing on in this bye week, I I vividly remember um, a phone call that I get. Um, we were getting ready to go play uh, Arizona. I think it was a Monday night game too. And um, the whole week up, you know, Garrett and I were texting, and he's you know, hey man, like it's their bye week. They're getting ready to play Ohio State the next week for the whiteout. And Garrett's texting me like, yeah, you know, I really I really want to fly out to California to go see Maddie. And I think I need to, you know, maybe maybe run it by coach, but I really want to do it. It's a long weekend, and I really need to get out there. Da, da, da. And I'm telling him, terrible idea, don't do it. Terrible <laughs> idea, do not do it. The entire Great. week. Great. And then, um, and then uh, I get a call. I'm sitting. Uh, we flew in a couple days early because it was out in Arizona. It was like the one day we got to hang out. I just got back from Top Golf. We did our walkthrough. I'm sitting on my balcony, you know, just overlooking this golf course. I get a call from Garrett. He's panicked, full panic mode. Monday, <laughs> heading into the bye week. Monday, or heading into game week against Ohio State. Oh my god, dude, my plane, or it was Sunday or whatever it was. My plane, my plane flight got delayed. I think I'm, I'm not going to make it in time. I'm not going to get back to State College in time. Da-da-da-da-da. Ends up missing it, missing the team meeting the next day. And it leads to his epic suspension for the first half of the Ohio State game. Am I am I on track here, Garrett, with this story? I'm pretty sure that I haven't <laughs> anything else. A little up. bit off. A little no. bit off? A little bit off. What's what's the discrepancy? Yeah. So what so what what had happened was <laughs> <laughs> you know this is by uh haven't seen Maddie since before camp. It was like, you know, sixteen, twenty weeks at that point. And Maddie is his now wife and girlfriend at the time. Penn State yeah, cheerleader. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Works it. The whole American and, dream. Um, <laughs> anyway, all my classes, talk to my teachers. I remember Coach saying, no one's going home early on the bye week unless you're an upperclassman and you have like a B plus or something like that. And I was like, Coach, I have an A in both these classes. And the one class, like, I'm dropping because I don't need it. You know, and he was like, all right, well, what are you going to do? I'm like, well, I'm going to go to see Maddie. And he's like, well, I don't think that's a good idea. I'm like, well, Cola's going home. Mm. <laughs> and Mark Allen, I'm throwing all these guys in the bus. Come on, Mark <laughs> Allen. It's just. <laughs> Dude, I, I got receipts, too. Uh, John, Nick, they were all going to L.A. So, best part, after Wednesday practice, I was like, I'm out of here. Backpack, go to the airport. Sitting on a flight to Dulles, Coach Huff is sitting right next to me with all those guys. And Coach Ooh. Huff is like, go sing this up to Maddie. Because you know Huff. Huff was a man. <laughs> Shout out, Coach Huff. Yeah. Marshall. So I got this tag up to Marshall. Yeah. yeah. So we're all on this flight together at LA. I'm like, fired up, see Maddie. Like, the guys are going to have a good time, whatever. So coming back, I remember, you know, I took the earlier flight home. Because I wanted to get back in time, I took. Like you were a, just, you were just, you had that much foresight, you know. Just wait, just wait. I took like the seven thirty p.m. flight. Koa and all of them were on the nine o'clock flight home, both through Chicago. So I'm sitting there asleep, and all of a sudden the flight attendant gets on the phone, like, "Hey, we're being diverted to Indianapolis because of weather." Mm. I'm like, "Uh oh, this isn't good." So it's supposed to be like 20 minutes just hovering over Indianapolis. We landed. And by the time I got to Chicago, all those guys were flying from their connecting flight with Daniel Joseph and Colin Castagna. And Colin Castagna and Daniel Joseph were waiting at the gate because they were calling my name. And they are like, don't leave yet. He's not here. So I call Spence, and I'm panicking. I'm like, Coach, this is what happened. He goes, Colin already called me. Daniel Joseph already called me. Just get here when you get here. I bought a flight to Harrisburg. I borrowed one of the Schwann's 
vehicles <laughs> drove it up from Harrisburg. And uh, shout out to Evan Schwan too, man. Yeah, M- missed the <laughs> been your ultimate teammate. Probably was that week. He, he probably yeah. wasn't that week. I don't think I got asked any questions that week. You probably didn't. <laughs> but uh, I do remember I was, I was pretty heated in that meeting. Yeah, I remember that. Well, there was a couple things said by one coaching member that really ticked me off. But <laughs> I, won't, I won't say anything. So, so, this is, so this is fantastic. So you get suspended for the first half of Ohio State. And you mm-hmm. find this out early, right? Like early in the week? Sunday night. Yeah, Sunday night. So you're you're suspended for the first half of Ohio State. And I wasn't a starter until I earned it back, too. And there was some other stuff in there. but I'm pretty sure you earned it back after the second half performance. No, I didn't. Oh. I set out the first series against Purdue. Okay. Well, you got it back on track. I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm you sound still a, bitter about it, and I'm just trying to make it fun of you. Like, that's what I'm trying to do, man. I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry to pick a bad bone. I'm over it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, Stanley Cup, I'm over. Well, anyway, it was it was one of the most epic second half performances from a from a from a defensive line men in Penn State history. I think what was it? Two and a half sacks. Mm-hmm. Clutch. Yeah, Count two and a half sacks. Clutch. Okay. At the end of the day, hey, it was all worth it. You're married now, so happy wife, happy life. It all worked out. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been way worse if it didn't work out. Yeah. It didn't work out. <laughs> yeah. so, the second half and, yeah I love yeah. it well love it. anyway so for any 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 fan out there listening wondering why uh 90 wasn't lined up the first half of Ohio State and it was you know hey you know, he violated some type of team rule that was the team rule he violated um so uh, I was trying <laughs> to guide him I was trying to guide him from from the from the <laughs> beyond but he didn't listen to me uh so anyway bye weeks Bye weeks. We started off with a funny on bye weeks, but uh, in all seriousness, I think that this bye week for this team this year uh, couldn't come at a better time. You know, figuring everything out. You have the latter half of your season, which has the majority of your marquee matchups. You got through Iowa. You got through West Virginia. Now you got, um, you know, Maryland team that's playing pretty well. You got you big know, game this week, Maryland O State. I don't know about that one. I'm not writing it off. Yeah, but you got the Ohio see. State, and then you got Michigan. Um, so, uh, yeah, you got, got a few other things sprinkled in there, but, uh, you know, I think, like I said, the battle, the attrition, the floor being what I judge this team by, I think the floor gets us by every other week, except for, um, really those two, but, you know, if you want to throw one in there, it's Maryland. So when you're going into a bye week we've all been in them. We've, we've been through them. We know how they are. Some, some, you know, people are looking forward to catching a flight out to California, (laughs) <laughs> Others uh, people are trying to figure out how they can uh, – what they've done in the first half of the year or whatever portion of the season comes before that bye week and, and trying to figure out what they're going to present the second half. It's a time for reflection as well as uh, execution and foresight. So defensively, what do you think What do you think Manny's going to be really hammering on here based upon what they've put on tape in the first half of this year? Um, and with, with that being said and what's coming down the pipe, um, what, what's going to be their focus this bye week? I say, you know, what happens a lot in bye weeks too is the offensive coaches, you know, they get with the defensive coaches and they almost scheme each other, yeah, tell each other their weaknesses, what they've been seeing on film. If I was to play you, what would I do? Blah, blah, blah. And I think defensively we can, you know, we know what the the scheme is going to be. We're going to attack, attack, attack. We keep talking about it. That's not changing. That's our defensive uh, mindset or whatever. But I think the recognition, almost like you said with Drew, whether it's the DBs and the linebackers in coverage, I think there's even more plays to be made. You know, whether it's getting in these passing windows as a linebacker, that's something I didn't even really catch on to until playing the NFL is, bro, the punch out, getting depth. And you know this as a, a ball thrower is like it's different in yeah. the league versus college where yeah. these linebackers had a little bit more you know, foresight to – route recognition and really punching out and getting depth, they'll be they'll be making so many so much more plays, so many more plays uh out there. So I think things like that where they can improve and just honestly, there's more turnovers to be to be made. Garrett? Rush lane integrity, gap integrity. That's it. Like, Always fundamentals. Like if you take on your blocks 
and you're in your gap, it's going to free up the linebackers to stop the run, and that opens up getting after the passer. And yeah. If you could rush four and get home and get your hands up and passing windows and keep quarterbacks in the pocket or have to make them go the long way, you know, that way your high rushers can get them, I think that's all the difference in the world. Wow. Yeah. I think, you know, I, I, I'll preface this. I would not want to be a GA for either side of the football because they're, right now they are going through every single snap, <laughs> yeah, yeah. breaking it up into explosive, successful, not successful, worth a damn, not worth a damn, da 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 da, cutting this up for all these guys to watch. Um, and I think that's that's obviously extremely important. And there's uh, there's merit to studying the numbers and studying the statistics. What I really want to see this team start to do, I think you made a great point, B, is like scheme up. But really focus on the on the good versus good here. You get a couple days of practice where you can you can not bang, but you can get after it and make competitive mm-hmm. series where it's you know your your depth has been great. You haven't had really anything bad from an injury bug standpoint. Knock on wood. Um, I think you get a chance to really focus, especially early in the bye week, on some good versus good stuff and get back to that reactionary like mm-hmm. this is who we are, our DNA, both defensively and offensively, and just execute that stuff. Right. Um, and kind of like call it periods and stuff like that. Um, and then offensively, you know, figuring out who they are. And I think they've done that. Like I said, ball control offense. They want to win the time of possession. They want to not turn the football over. Um, I think that the the rumblings and the anxiety of trying to get some explosives, especially on normal downs and in the open field, is something that, I think everybody's starting to pay attention to and turn the ear to. You heard Drew mention it a couple of times in his in his press conference. So so it's it's being said and people are hearing it. Um, I just really want them to stay patient with that, man. I yeah. think it's going to come. Yep, don't um, think so. You know, the one thing we talked about was early on was like the benefit of having two backs too that are there's no difference really. I mean, they're two mm-hmm. of the best backs in the country, and when you start getting into week seven, eight, nine, ten. Only bear, only bearing half the load all year. You guys are going to have fresher legs than the majority of that defense that you're facing. Right. So there's definitely an element of that that I think is going to lead to some of those more explosives. And then from an offensive line standpoint, you know, I think they've done a really good job of of being efficient. I think they're going to look to get some more explosives. I think that center, you know, coming in first year, I think he's a first year starter this year off of after um, center from last year left for the league. So him being able to take advantage of some time with his unit and figure out ways how to communicate better and specifically maybe in the run game and, and figure out some of the fundamentals of it. But, yeah, you're right. Bye weeks are about fundamentals. Now, I do want to pose this question to you guys because um, if I was Coach Franklin, I would definitely be doing this um, without a doubt, no questions asked, um, maybe not publicizing it, and I'm sure mm-hmm. he's not if he is doing this, but I would have a focus on Ohio state at some point in time, I'd be focusing on Ohio state for a period of time, whether it's base install, studying them a little bit, maybe getting some looks against what they're doing and how they're Mm -hmm. doing it. But I, I I would do that. Um, I know it goes against the mantra, but what are your thoughts on that? I think, as you said, some of those cars that those GAs are writing up, they're definitely, Ohio State influence those looks that they're mm-hmm. showing right now, offensively and defensively. Uh, whether they whether he explains that to the players or not, but I think some of those cards are definitely made being put into practice. Hundred percent. Like you don't tell the guys, but you start feeding them subconsciously. You know these looks, and then that mm-hmm. way, when Ohio State week comes, you're just playing. Right. You know, a lot of those mm-hmm. very similar schemes and everything, and. You know, going back to the just the whole bye week thing. I mean, as a vet, I love the bye week because you got to rest. But for those younger guys who aren't getting as many reps, it's important for them. You know, whether because I remember with Coach Franklin Lee, the vets were done Wednesday if we wanted to come Thursday or whatever. But they always had like a young guy practice on a Thursday. Yeah, yeah. But you know? here's the thing, though, man. I think more so than any other time in his tenure up there, those guys have gotten game reps. Like live reps. Well, I think it goes back to two now that you can play less than four games, four, four, games. four games and less, and still have a red shirt. Yeah, you can still. Yeah. Be, I think that helps too. Um, 
you know, and getting those reps, I mean, that that's more valuable than any practice rep. Yeah. That's why I said, I think it's interesting because to that, that rule shift. And then also the fact that the way the games have sh- shaken out up until this point, there's been opportunity for that development to your point in the best way possible. So how do you then take advantage of that gap of time that's now open? Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, I wouldn't even do it subliminally, man. I'd be like, listen, it's Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> you got you got that Bill O'Brien mindset. You got no. the Buckeyes. No. Yeah, you got I'm not talking the the fighting the fighting uh, the fighting men of UMass, the Brennemans, the the, the Brennan half Brennaman Bowl up there. I'm not I'm not knocking them, but I'm just saying, um, you know. <sighs> I hate that. Though. I, I think with 120, yeah. 18 to 22 year olds, you can't do that. Man. Exactly. I get where you're coming from. We could we could have probably handled that, but yeah. nowadays yeah. the whole come by there. week. Like, I think outside of going home, these guys got a lot of other opportunities. NIL is going to take up some of that time. They've got some uh, some things to attend to in that regard. Well, that's true. But I mean, hell, man, these guys, these guys are damn near pros now. They're getting – Well, yeah, they need salary. a salary. So, hey, let's, let's, let's pony up and let's focus on what, what we got to do to win a ring. <laughs> yeah. I will I say, Gino, like, this is probably the best scheduled bye week that yeah. Penn State has had. In the last ten years, and they don't have Ohio State and Michigan like back to back. We've I'm always saying. that's always. I mean, at least it seemed it, that it was either Ohio State by week, Michigan vice versa, or we played someone random or something, and then we had a bye week going right into Ohio State. Yeah, you know, I mean, having kind of a bye week before, you know, still a huge game. Like we got to handle our business at UMass, and then you get right back into your routine. I think that's huge. And this, uh, this is a, it brought me to the point, handling business at UMass brings me to the point of these late end of game touchdowns we've been scoring, covering, if you may. I think you have to do it because you don't know what's going to be the the ultimate factor of who gets chosen at the end of the season. You know, oh, yeah. The wow factor, the point spread differential is going to be important. So whatever yeah. you whatever you believe, why we're, we're continuing to score, just know – when it's ring chasing time and championship chasing time, it's gonna matter because yeah, there's no rhythm out there. Yeah, things are gonna get keep the, keep the foot on the gas and put the hammer in the coffin. Yeah, like keep yeah. going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's good. But ultimately, you know, we we touched on the bye week's been great. Um, the bye week is great for them this year, and bye weeks are always much needed. So, um. With that, let's transition over to some of this mailbag, which is one of my favorite segments. I'm happy we brought it to the pod. (laughs) And we finally have a guest joining us with this. So you're going to get a little bit of a a free free football, folks, free uh, (laughs) fifth quarter. Um, So let's start with – let's start with the Hawaiian Lion. The Hawaiian Lion. The Hawaiian Lion on, uh, on, on X. Um, everyone is saying that this offensive line is the best Franklin has had, yet the running game doesn't have many explosive plays. What seems to be the problem? And there were – let me preface this. There were a couple other folks that, that said something yeah, similar to this, so shout out to the few, few, of, those, few of those folks out there. But um, I just went with the Hawaiian Lion because you get a sweet Twitter handle. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I mean, I think we kind of touched on it. Oh, we definitely touched on it a lot. Um, I want it takes a lot to gain those explosive plays. One, everyone has to kind of like a symphony, be on the same page, the blocking, whether it's the O line, which we still believe is the better O lines that we've had over the last few years. Don't let's not get that twisted. And the blocking downfield, second and third level. I think it all has to kind of time up correctly, and it just hasn't happened yet. But I've, if you're watching, it's it's that close. It's you know, a trip up at that second level, guys get their knees churning. It's it's coming for sure. I agree. I agree. Like you see those doubles coming off, and he's just half a yeah. step. You know, they just they just seem to get their timing right because the scheme's there. Yeah, like the plays are there. I mean, how many times have we watched this year and we we're like, oh, he almost broke that. Even last weekend, you know, it's just they got to get up to that second level where it's better takes on the double teams or something. It, it's gonna happen. It's just timing. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. It is the second level. I, they're handling the first level and moving bodies and creating the initial yeah. holes and, and lanes 
they're doing that phenomenally well. And that bodes back to what type of offense we've been in terms of that ball control. Like we're still mm. averaging probably damn near four and four, four and a half yards a carry. I'd, I'd venture to say somewhere in that in that realm. I don't know the exact statistics. Someone can fact check me, but uh, just watching the games, I, I would assume it's probably somewhere in there. So um, at that at that efficiency, you know, you can't can't really be too too frustrated. You know, mm-hmm. I think you're getting a little greedy uh, with anything beyond that. I do have one bone to pick. I don't like these QB sneaks from two three yards away. <laughs> well, I got a, I got an even bigger bone to pick. I mean, listen. I'm going to – this is this is kind of like what you said with the Taylor Swift thing. Like, you know, the Eagles are successful with quarterback sneaks. Dude, people forget. Like, go watch Tom Brady when he was doing quarterback sneaks. Like, the damn quarterback sneak has been around. Yeah. Since- he, he was the original – well, he was already the go. But he was like the go to the QB sneak. Where he, mm-hmm. he never got stopped. It was like 100 and some odd freaking quarterback sneak attempts straight. He got first down. So, it's like, listen, dude, like, Jalen, they're doing it, whatever you want to call it. I'm not a fan of that. But however you're, however you're framing this up, like – this isn't a novelty thing. Like it's been around forever. Yeah. Um, so, so as a as a football community, we need to chill <laughs> with all this like yeah. enamorment. Like we're getting bored. We got to get excited right. about freaking quarterback sneaks again. Like, give me a break. Um, I'm but yeah, I do agree. Hand it off to the backs. That's I've yes. always been that way. I get it, fourth and inches maybe, but anything more than that, give it to the backs, man. Two yards, yeah. line up, twelve personnel, run power. You know. Get a tight end just coming right through, or an ISO just oh, knocking yeah. shin strap through. It's, like I'm all it's about not it. coming out, dude. I'm I'm a Warren. Warren. Power, you know that H spot and just go. Mm-hmm. Dude, someone should have Tyler Warren. Tyler Warren should have two helmets on the on the sideline. One yeah. should have should have the fight, yes. have the have the, the cross T bone T bone crosshair just for <laughs> short down yardages. <laughs> um, that would be fantastic. Yeah, Mustafa, I think PJ Mustafa had that face. Yeah, it's, it's a great, it's a great look, especially on those new, on the new, uh, on the on the speed flexes and stuff. Uh, just throw a bar in the middle yeah, with dude, a visor. Seriously, <laughs> if I played any position except for quarterback, I'd have rocked that for sure. <laughs> Don't lie. I'm not lying. <laughs> I'm not lying. One, there's not an ounce of 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 fake a tree in there. Like the late great not, pack. Totally in pocket, not out of pocket. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Um, let's go to the next one here. Da, 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 I got a Weagle matter. Another good, another good, uh, Weagle. It's a good plan at, at CT weeks. Um, what do you think is the biggest reason for lack of explosiveness in the passing game? Uh, protection or lack thereof wide receivers, not getting separation, not wanting to take the training wheels off drew hiding the playbook for certain opponents like Ohio state and Michigan. We touched on some of this, um, but I felt like that last part there was, yeah, yeah, was a little, that's a good one. little uh, dust on top of the, uh, on top of that, the exclamation point. So, <laughs> uh, or question mark really. But um, what do you got? What do you got for that? I could see that cherry on top being a small part of it, very small part. I think it goes back to what we touched on earlier. Heck, you talking about Drew? You know, just yeah. getting more confident. You know, and I also think it's just the difference. Like for a couple of years, we were all spoiled with a very explosive offense with Jumbo. You know what I mean? And it's just a different built offense or differently built offense. Um, I do think those shots are there. I think Drew week in, week out, he's starting to trust his instincts more and just like we said, be a football player. I think it's all opening up. Um, but those shots will <clears throat> most certainly open up once we start really establishing the run game, play action, you know, get downfield type scenarios. But yeah. I think it's I definitely think we haven't seen all on offense displayed. Yeah. Me? Yeah, yeah, I agree with all that. I mean, I think it's a little bit of everything. I mean, it's definitely, as you said, with the O-line, it's the timing with these receivers and mm-hmm. and the looks that they're getting. I mean, hey, these defense, these other defensive coordinators aren't, you know, Jimmy from off the street. These guys are getting paid to yeah. uh, eliminate the explosive plays to not let those happen, so – I think there's a lot of pride, as he, as we know, when people play Penn State to not let those plays happen. 
And it's just like, as you said, you got to be patient. You can't just chuck a deep ball because you want to get an explosive play. And then we're yelling at the kid, why do you throw the interception? You know, so it's a, it's a little bit of everything. Got to wait for the right look, but also it's going to have, it's going to be that confident in those receivers to maybe if the look isn't quite what you want it to be, but if it's a one-on-one situation, I'm not mad at giving a guy a chance. Uh, let him go make a play in the right situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here's I got I got two points here. I think I think one I think Drew just needs to the biggest one is I think he just needs to start throwing those shots in that fifteen to twenty two plus type of passing game with again more anticipation. He's waiting mm-hmm. to see the guy open. He's waiting to see the separation as opposed to throwing those guys to separation. Right. Um, and again, that comes with playing and seeing it and doing it. Secondly, um, people are, are are asking for explosiveness, but we're scoring thirty plus points a game, mm-hmm. and we're winning by twenty plus points. And a lot of it goes back to our defense. Um, we get a lot of short fields because of the way our defense turns the football over. So, um, I think that there's a lot of different ways to define explosiveness, uh, and I think this offense does a great job of being explosive in their own way. Mm. Now, if you're talking about the true definition of explosive plays from an offensive standpoint, you know, chunk plays. Um, like I said, I think, I think ultimately it's going to come. You guys made some great points about working in the play action and stuff like that, especially the latter half. Now that teams have some of what we do consistently, there's chances for early, early down play actions and stuff like that. But um Yeah. I think Drew anticipating it, and you know, again, there's there's a lot of ways to skin that cat, and yeah. we're we're doing a good job of putting points on the board. So, yeah. even um, to the, even to the point, Sickles made real quick. Yeah. Even before Jomo, I think God, we're spoiled because last year there was a ton of explosive, you know, runs and passes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, but you know that last year is last year. Guy, like, especially I'm thinking of Singleton. You know, he's a freshman. People, you know, it's a true thing, and people aren't aware of what you really get until you play them. And now teams are aware of what's what's kind of foresight to come during the game. So you just, just got to be patient. Sit back and let the guys uh, make magic. Yeah. All right. Let's get one more. And, again, we appreciate everyone's submissions. Uh, let let Brandon know if we didn't get to you. He does a good job of taking that personally. Um, <laughs> and we'll make sure we get to you guys. But uh, Make sure they're good, though. Make sure they're good. <laughs> yeah, we get yeah. a bunch of we get a bunch that are kind of similar. You know, we're not going to ask the same thing over and over. So correct. Try to pick new people too. <laughs> um, we're going to go with uh, Dilly Drinks. Um, why do you think Penn State has struggled three and seven historically under James Franklin, coming off of a bye week? From a former player's perspective, what needs to change to right that ship? That's interesting. I did not know that that was the case. Me neither. Me neither. But it goes back to that point that Garrett said. You know, oftentimes that bye week was kind of sandwiched in between uh, in between Goliaths. Yeah. So, um, what do you guys think of that? Man, I, I, I have. I think I might need to go back and look at it, those games. Because... What do you guys? Think? This is gonna sound funny coming from the guy that went to, you know across the country during the bye week, but I actually <laughs> hate bye weeks <laughs> because everyone, like, especially with, you know, our experience either playing Ohio State or Michigan at the end of the bye week, there's just a two week buildup for nothing. And we got young kids. We got, we're just, you know, if you, we could just keep the routine, you know, punch in, punch out, do your job. You know, I, I just think it's, it's human nature. You know, you let off the gas a little bit, you rest for a few days, you come back, and sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Now, I think that 2016 year is a little bit different. You know, we went through so much adversity. That senior class, you know, that was already there in 2012, those freshmen, they weren't going to be denied, you know, be denied a good season, and neither were we the 2013 class. So I think we, you have to have very experienced leaders um, you know, it comes down to the opponent too. I think it comes down to your locker room leadership and how you prepare. The other thing is the margin of, you know, victory in those games. 
you know, Bebel, can you pull that up? Oh, yeah, which, well, which year you, you, uh, uh, I mean, it's always been like close games. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I was in 2017 where we actually beat Michigan, if I'm correct. Uh, but then we had Ohio State right after. So it is, I think it's a ton of variables, man. It's, it's tough to say. It is definitely tough to say. I will say we do at Penn State get the short end of the stick oftentimes with scheduling. I will, I, I'm not. I'm not making excuses, but no, I will. No, no, yeah. You know, we're away every time we open up Big Ten play for like twenty something years. It's not twenty years, but yeah. it feels like it consecutively. Ten, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think it also goes to what we've been talking about: depth and health. As we said, knock on wood, it's a time to get healthy. But oftentimes, like going back to that 2016 year, I, I wasn't even supposed to play. I was still yeah. injured. I threw my quad. Uh, so I think it's just hard to say exactly what's the nail on that one, but I think it takes depth. It takes talent, obviously, and ultimately just a good scheme of whatever, whoever the opponent is coming up after the bye week. So yeah, definitely an alarming stat, I'd say, but I'm confident we get over that hump this, this year. Oh, we better. I mean, it's, yeah. it's you, man. <laughs> I'm gonna well, get that record out. Would it be four, four? No, and it's a spade, a spade, brother. It's UMass. Let's go. I just remember B Bell's first game. <laughs> 2016 was the Ohio State game. That was, yeah. I was limited snap count, and in my head, I, I think I said it in a pregame speech. Like, I was kind of not scared to play, but I was scared. I wasn't sure, necessarily sure how I was gonna be. You know, it's the first time back mm-hmm. against prime time opponent. You know, thank God, and you know, adrenaline definitely helped. But I was out there uh, all game. <laughs> adrenaline and yeah, a little, little court, a little few shots. Yeah, like yeah. Tackles little, little a little visit to Tim Bream prior to warmups. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, anyway, um, mailbag <laughs> Monday. Uh, appreciate you guys. Keep them coming. Uh, big part of the show, and we want to make sure again. Make this we make this as inclusive as possible. So, um, and with that, that's a wrap, man. That's the pocket for this week. Bye week. Um, we, we were fortunate enough to have Mister Bye Week himself here, Garrett Sickles. Garrett, we appreciate yeah. your time spending an hour with us, chopping it up, reminiscing, little ball, little analytics. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, someone learned something. This guy knows ball, man. I tried. Not bad for a knuckle dragger up front. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys. The pocket. Tune in next week. I'll be hitting you guys up for the mailbag Monday. Stay tuned, and let's uh, let's just all stay positive. Yeah, man. And as always, uh, follow us on all of our socials: uh, uh, State Media PSU, C Hackenberg One, underscore underscore B Bell. Yeah, I'm never going to memorize that one, so I'm happy you got it. The two underscores always gets me. Um, <laughs> and, get uh, again, the on-campus live podcast at downtown, uh, at the Champs downtown location, is moved to October 16th, which is a Monday. Um, I have no shame drinking beers on Monday, so I'll see you guys there. Um, and uh, we appreciate you guys.